Hello and welcome to the fourth tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. So where we left off was we created a man class, made the constructor, made the update or overrided the update method, and made the character move. So in the next in this tutorial we're going to at least make the guy point towards your mouse. And hopefully later on shoot. So oops. I went ahead and copied one of the methods I made in my other project called point direction. It's a nifty little method I made uh, that finds the angle between two points and you basically just put uh, two coordinates in and it finds the angle which at which it should point at that. And uh, here, I'll probably, here you can look at it right now, copy it, pause the video, but I don't, I didn't really want to go over this. Uh, just basic math, sort of boring, not really programming related. So, well, anyways, I, in the update method, I'm gonna, you, the character always wants to point towards the mouse, so I'm gonna make rotation equals point, direction, and then the x and y coordinates of the mouse and the player. So, this will be position dot x, position dot y, and then actually we have to get the mouse state so I'm going to do the same thing with the mouse just like I did with the keyboard so mouse state mouse mouse state previous mouse and mouse equals mouse dot get state and pre previous mouse equals mouse. Okay, so now here I'm going to put mouse dot x, which is the x coordinates for the mouse. Mouse dot y, which is the y coordinates for the coordinates for the mouse. And so basically, it will set a rotation to at to the point, to the rotation at which it should point at the mouse. So, uh, actually, if we go ahead and test this, how how are we doing on time? Oh, very good. You see, it points towards my mouse, or at least you can see it turning. You can't see my mouse, uh, and that's a problem we'll fix right now. Uh, I'm going to create a new class. and I'm going to name it cursor and this is going to inherit from the object class this is going to be a dynamic object so I'm going to make the constructor cursor vector cursor vector oh, I spelled cursor wrong Cur uh, no. Okay, that, okay, that's fine. I just forgot got the O. Cursor. What? Cursor. Okay, there we go. Okay. Right. Oh yeah, forgot to import all all the XNA framework stuff. There we go. So now we should be able to use vector twos and stuff like that. Okay. Vector two. POS. Base. POS. Okay. Position. Okay. So now we want to override the update method. So over. Public. Public. Override. Update. And we want the location to always be positioned by the mouse. So I'm going to go position equals new vector two. Oh, actually, I actually forgot to. I'm just going to copy and paste because I'm lazy. Mouse, and then mouse equals mouse dot get state. 
um, let's see. Mouse dot x and mouse dot y. Okay, so our position should always be set to mouse dot x and y. And actually, we want to import another sprite, and this is going to be our our cursor sprite or our mouse or our mouse sprite. So, actually, I made a cursor dot png here. Yeah, cursor. And actually, one thing I wanted to do here: get rid of this line. We don't need this. Is for a sprite name. Get this, and it's just gonna get the sprite name. So this stuff, sprite name. So I'm going to just add the default block image for all objects that don't have a sprite. So I'm just gonna import a block.png. You don't have to do this, but this is just the way I like to do it. Just name this block. Get rid of that. So, in here, I want to set. Oops. In the constructor, we want to set the object. Oh, where is it? What do we name it? Sprite name. Okay. Sprite name. I'm gonna set the sprite name equal to man. So each each uh, class we can create that inherits object can have their own unique sprite. So that's an idea. So for the cursor sprite, the sprite name will equal cursor because that's the name of the sprite we want. So we add the cursor to here. So Cursor, cursor equals new cursor, and I'm just going to give it coordinates of zero. Oh, create a new vector, vector two, new vector two, and give it coordinates of x and y to zero, and that should be good. Although it's giving me an error. Oh, I said to private again. That's sort of a bad habit. Okay, there we go. Then we have to do the same thing over for for all for the cursor. All the same things we did for the man, which can be tedious. And later, and later in the episodes, uh, we will be creating something that will get rid of all this annoying typing. Because every time you want to add something right now, you have to manually type everything in. And that can get annoying. What if you have 200 different things that you'll have to type it 200 different times, it'll just get messy, cluttered, and you won't even want to look at it. Okay, so. Right back. So pretty much same thing, exact same thing we're doing with, uh, man class except it's a cursor class so now as, as you can see I have a simple mouse just an object dynamic object that follows the location of my mouse so it simulates a uh, mouse cursor so pretty nifty see how we're doing on time almost done so uh, I think that's good for this tutorial in the next tutorial we'll be covering on how the player actually shoots reloads, stuff like that, and creating a bullet class. And then maybe after that, actually before we create bullet classes, we'll probably do the thing I mentioned earlier, and so we won't have to type everything in every time we make a new class and want to add it. So thank you for watching, I'd appreciate it if you left a rating, uh, thank you.